Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So huge news, everyone's freaking out. Robert Downey Jr. has just been cast in Captain America 3. This is gonna be a breakdown of what's going on and behind the scenes because apparently it caused some big problems behind the scenes at Marvel. It actually took a lot of negotiating and at one point he was cut out of the movie then put back in, so there's a lot of drama. Hello to any new people. If you're just finding me for the first time, I do Marvel and DC videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. So first things first, here's what we know about the movie itself. The two big titles that they're working on adapting are Civil War and Fallen Sun. Obviously Iron Man and Captain America, two very important characters to those stories. Fallen Sun is essentially the follow-up to Civil War. Just to explain things a little bit better, I have to get into minor spoilers for the comics, so if you want to, you can just mute the audio until this spoiler tag goes away. Everybody ready? Okay, here we go. Civil War splits the Marvel Universe over the idea of superhero registration. The government wants everyone to register their secret identities. They kind of did this in the X-Men movie universe with the mutant registration. It's the same idea. Captain America takes the people's side and says, no, everyone does not need to give up their identities. Iron Man takes the side of the government. Remember, Stark Enterprises gets a shitload of money from the government. So obviously, Tony Stark being the capitalist is going to side with the money. Big battle goes down. Eventually, Captain America gets assassinated. There is like a whole separate plot going on with that that deals with the Red Skull. It's not super important for this story right now. Fallen Sun, the other story that they're thinking about adapting for the movie, is the follow-up to Civil War. It just deals with the aftermath of Captain America's death. Obviously, we all know Captain America comes back to life and it involves this big time travel storyline, but it is an interesting way for them to invoke the time gem. I know obviously that gem has to come into the Marvel Universe at some point. That's what the story of the movie is supposed to be. Here's the story of what's going on with Robert Downey Jr. in the movie. Originally, it was planned for him to have a brief cameo, but Robert Downey Jr. wanted a bigger part. They changed the story, but because he ended up being a much bigger part of it, they had to pay him a lot more money, and the Marvel executives, like the ones that signed the checks, did not want to do that, so they ordered him to be written out of the movie. Kevin Feige, president of Marvel Studios, argued to get him back in, and eventually Robert Downey Jr.'s people, Kevin Feige, and Marvel Studios came to an agreement. That agreement amounts to about $40 million in pay. That is a lot of money, yes. The thought that they're using to justify that payday is that by putting Robert Downey Jr. in the movie, it'll boost the box office gross immensely. So they'll make their money back, or at least that's what they're hoping. Obviously before all this happens though, Avengers Age of Ultron has to go down, and the idea is that the fallout from that movie will be where all this chaos starts. Ultron's supposed to crush the Avengers, so obviously he's going to be destroying a lot of people. It's that chaos that will probably create the rift in the Avengers. Supposedly, Captain America is not supposed to be in Avengers 3. If the Avengers do have a falling out after Age of Ultron, and Captain America 3 turns into Civil War, that could explain why he's not going to be in Avengers 3. The funny thing is, is that by putting Robert Downey Jr. in Captain America, it essentially turns it into a pseudo-Avengers type movie. I mean, he's too big of a character for it to just be about Chris Evans. There's also been a lot of rumors that the cast of Avengers 3 won't involve most of the main Avengers. It'll be like an alternate roster. The Civil War storyline in the comics leaves this big void and essentially a new team of Avengers comes in. It's a whole separate plot that turns into Dark Reign and Dark Avengers, but essentially the normal Avengers are all scattered off until they form Secret Avengers. It gets really complicated, but basically all the normal Avengers aren't going to be Avengers anymore. The people that are writing Captain America 3 are also in talks to direct Avengers 3, so it makes sense that the Captain America 3 Civil War storyline will directly cross over with Avengers 3. Like Avengers 3 will be the follow-up to Civil War. So essentially what you have is you have two Avengers in a non-Avengers movie, lots of money being thrown around, lots of drama behind the scenes. I think it'll be really interesting. The real question though is that how are they going to deal with the Civil War storyline in the comics? Like how are they going to alter that? A lot of the characters, like Spider-Man, belong to other franchises. Spider-Man's a big character in Civil War. I know there have been a lot of talks about Sony including him in Avengers 3. That's still possible, but I'm not going to make any theories about it until I see something definite. Tony Stark, at his core though, is a character that's all about control, controlling his environment with technology. So it's possible that they'll use the Age of Miracles, so to speak, or mutants or whatever they want to call it inside the Marvel Universe, as the MacGuffin for superhero registration. So what does all this mean for Chris Evans' Robert Downey Jr.? 
Obviously, Robert Downey Jr. has a separate contract. He's not on like the six movie contract that everyone else is on. Chris Evans only has one more movie after Captain America 3. So if he sits out Avengers 3, that'd give him one more movie. He'd be able to retake the mantle in a future movie. Robert Downey Jr. is a whole other story. In his own words, he said he is going to ride the superhero wave into the shore. That just means he's gonna stay inside the Marvel Universe as long as they'll keep making deals with him. He's their biggest expense right now, so making deals with him is probably one of the hardest things for them to do. And when you make deals that are that big, it gets way more complicated legally and financially. So if you ever wondered why Marvel just doesn't announce everything at Comic-Con, it's because all this legal drama is going on behind the scenes trying to work out deals with people. It's been reported though that this Captain America deal is finalized, like it's gonna happen. They're not gonna rewrite the movie again. I do like the thought that they've rewritten it a couple times already. Like he was in the movie, then a studio boss ordered him out, so they wrote him out, and then they wrote him back in. It's crazy. The other really interesting thing is if Chris Evans is gonna sit out Avengers 3, does that mean someone else is gonna take the mantle of Captain America? Right now I would say my leading candidate would be Anthony Mackie. That's basically what they did in the comics. Falcon took on the mantle of Captain America right now, just as we're getting Lady Thor. Like Marvel's shuffling a lot of characters around in their titles. The other thought is that they would make Bucky Captain America. They've done both things in the comics. Both the Falcon and the Winter Soldier separately on separate occasions have been Captain America. Let me know what you would rather see though. Would you rather see the Winter Soldier take on the mantle of Captain America or would you rather see the Falcon become Captain America? And this is for Avengers 3, so this is still a long ways off. Because this is still a really big deal and they'll probably be reporting on this for the next couple of days, I'll do a follow up to this story in my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video tonight. So be sure to subscribe to get that. And if you have any big questions, I might do a few Q&A questions just because this is actually really interesting to talk about. If you guys are interested in like the businessy Hollywood side of all the superhero movies, just let me know and I'll include it in my future videos. I find it very fascinating, but sometimes people find it boring. Right now though, click here for a breakdown of the Avengers 2 trailer from Comic-Con and click here to learn about Captain Marvel maybe being in the movie. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five and just geek out a little bit at the thought of Iron Man being in a Captain America movie.